What a good looking group. Especially you, Jaden. <laughs> um, I want to give our young people who is in K4 through 5th grade. Raise your hand, wave it. Well, on Wednesday nights, you got a few Wednesdays left to get super blessed by Miss Dorothy. They're going through the Easter story through Bible study, music, arts, and crafts. I wonder if they'll let me sneak out of our prayer time for that. Come for supper and stay for study. So if you know any K4 through 5th graders, I encourage you to have them come. We have a library back there. It is a giving library. We do not lend. You can bring it back if you want to, but you don't have to. But I have a 3D CD set that we're going to put back there of old country church songs. In fact, some of them are so good I can't spare myself. I have a home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land. That's in there. They even, they almost sing it as good. <laughs> and this one here, some, I see, uh, some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air coming after you and me. Joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there. See, you can take that right home with you today. So. <laughs> it's got three CDs in there. It's got like three hours of good old songs like that. Don't you just love it? The deacon will say, I don't know why we pay him. He has way too much fun up there. <laughs> Today we're taking another step up and things that you can know that will bless you right out of your socks. And when you get into this word, it just opens up and God has so ordained. And like this word there, you're going, epic, whatever that is. When Paul, Luke, and those guys sit down and they wrote down, Jesus they didn't write perceived. They wrote E-P-I, however that word is there. You're saying, well, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to try to share with that a little bit. It's in the King James Version um, 42 times. And we've already studied the second part of that word there, a simple knowledge that has to do with a relationship knowledge that you know someone it's, it's more than just reading about someone in a book. You personally know them. You personally have an interaction with this knowledge and how important to know, flip down to that next side, to know thoroughly, fully, to become fully acquainted, competence. It's beyond natural knowledge, what we're talking about here today. It's, um, it's on the back of your bulletin. I'll let you read up on that. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly. That word there, Paul wrote that out. He said, now we see, and he spelled out enigma, which we translate it. How many of you have a few mysteries in your life? Have you ever found, discovered something that could just change something altogether? The... Um, I can't think of the pastor's name. He was preaching over here at um, Samaria. But he said for years he had this old big Ford station wagon. And one day he was in the parking lot waiting on his wife, John O'Kane. How many of you know John O'Kane? Big old guy. He said one day he was sitting in the shopping, the grocery store parking lot, and he said, what's that little thing for? He reached up there, and he pulled this knob, and the steering wheel went up out of his way. He says, for three or four years, I'd get in that car and crawl underneath that steering wheel. He says, I just played with that knob. Knowledge has a way of opening up a whole new realm to you. And sometimes knowledge can save you. I'll give you one other story. The guy who bought his chainsaw, and the guy said, man, you can cut through wood. Man, this thing, oh, man, you'll just love it. Well, he, two weeks later, a guy came back. He was... His hair was grayer. He was haggard looking. And the guy says, this thing was supposed to save me time. It did not do a bit of good. I went back to my handsaw, and he said, well, let me see what you were doing. He says, I'd put that thing on the log and go. <laughs> now, you're laughing. But if you're like me, there's a couple of things I can look in the mirror and say, yeah. <laughs> and see, this is the reason why God wants to open up knowledge to you because knowledge has a way of 
putting a little bit of right mix of gasoline and that oil in there, you just pour it in there. That's, that's Earl's job Wednesday. I'm not messing with that hand. Zip, zip. For now we see through a glass darkly. We're down there. But then face to face. Now I know, and that's just the part knowledge. That's, 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 it's not complete. Every one of us sitting in here, your knowledge is not complete. I'm sorry. You are subjected to futility in ways. And it's your fault. Because God wants you to know. He says, I will tell you everything you need to know, but you have to listen. Now I see in a glass partially, but then I shall epa. And the epa is the, is the super part of knowledge. One of these days, all the mysteries and confusion... All you wives, you're just going to be able to be in heaven and God's going to go boop. And all those things you've been trying to tell your husband for 20 years, it's just boop, it'll just snap right in there. Now, don't you wish they would listen to this sermon and say, <laughs> but then, and, I, and, and one of the most wonderful things, Midge Monday stepped over into heaven and God reached over and whoo, took the tears right from her eyes. Any confusion about people calling her on the phone wanting stuff, gone forever. She saw through every mystery. And one of the things is that love of God cast out fear. From that moment on, anytime there was a fear attack or anything, that knowledge just rose up and she's just, oh, hallelujah. Knowledge has powerful, powerful ramifications. All right, Romans 8, 14. I want to go through this rather fastly. I, did, I just loaded those in there this morning. 814, for as many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. You and I have no clue what people are thinking. You can get in trouble presuming. How many of someone presumed that you were thinking something and you were thinking something much more noble or better? How, how bad did that hurt? But the Spirit who you have invited into your life, who is the seal of your salvation, the spirit who is leading you, if you are a true child of God, it knows. It not only knows the information, as you see in a little bit, but it understands and knows the reasoning under it. That spirit you have total access to. And you and I need to learn how to tap. For as many as are led, I want to tell you, I, I'm under heavy conviction. How many times... Have I not been led by the Spirit? Hello, are you been there? You know, I'm going to, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, not even going to go there. But anyway, Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You don't even know your own heart. I tell Renee, you don't know your heart. How do you expect me to know it, darling? not trying to be cute or anything, but see, you sit there sometimes and you think you know things and, and you got to be very, very careful because there are things going on in your heart that only the Spirit can make it clear. And, and if you're deceived about the darkness that's within you, there's no help. The first step of getting deliverance is to acknowledge you need help. I stand here today like never before in light of this study this week. I need help. I need a lot of help. And you're part of that help. If, you're, if you see something that I need to know and you don't tell me, the preacher, you might make him lose what little religion he has. No, but see, this is the power of that, that we help each other, and this is how the body of Christ works. And you have to have this help to get to where you want to be totally free. We don't know our own heart. Revelations 2.23 he, the Spirit of God, God the Father, He is searching down into your heart, checking to see where you are. You remember we came into the garden and He said, Adam, where are you? He was not concerned about His GPS location. He was concerned about where He was in relationship to God. And God is wanting to know right now, where are you? 
And when I'm going through this study, I'm hanging my head saying, Lord, I should have known. I, I, if you rely on this little peanut up here, you will do nothing but get deeper into trouble. But if you're led by the Spirit, the Spirit will come and I, I'll give him free reins. It's like a, it says his yoke. The yoke is not a very nice thing to put on an animal. It's like a collar that you put on a dog that you don't let him bark. You want to see my? <laughs> and I want to let you know the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you can just sense that that Holy Spirit is like pull those reins. And I've, I've given, I want the Holy Spirit. And sometimes he works through you deacons and different ones. Whoa. Hallelujah. Spared me a bigger problem. You know, Renee has her studio set up. I think you should. The Holy Spirit said, hush up. I think it's beautiful. Yes, it is. It's very beautiful. The Holy Spirit can spare you a tremendous amount of trouble. All right. I want to give you a, a, out of your scriptures in Mark 2. We just want to go through about eight or so verses there. Whoo, glory. We're way ahead. Mark 2, verse 1. And again, he entered... Capernaum. This was kind of like God's, Jesus' home base when he was there in Israel. And I was so curious when uh, Mark was pending this out, when he wrote out Capernaum, village of comfort. Is it no wonder that Jesus kept going back to Capernaum? Let me let you know that every time God gives you knowledge, supernatural, beyond your own understanding, it's always a knowledge to bring you comfort. And if you are, are anxious, or if you have trouble, if there is despair or any kind of turmoil in your life, it's because you need some direction. Because God, every time he comes in, he will take you out of darkness, out of trouble, and bring you into peace, rest, fellowship, joy, prosperity, our natural tendency, I, my natural tendency, is to go back over here. I want to do this my way. Fine. Are you ready for some help? Yes, I'm ready for some help. You know, you got knots on your head, cobwebs, and you're all beat up and haggard looking. The city of comfort, village of comfort. He, he entered in after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. What? When you come into church, you bring something that only you can bring. Now, this is one of the best groups we've had in here on Sunday morning. Thank you. There, it, you bring, there is, every person brings something. Your spirit, it just brings something. It was heard that he was in the house, verse 2, immediately. Now, the reason this word immediately is that Mark represents Jesus as the servant who came. As a servant of the Lord, this is one area. Turn the light. Get on, get on, get on. You'll see this all the way through the Mark. In the different Gospels, he's presented as the king, as the man. But in Mark, it's the servant. Immediately... Many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door, and he preached the Logos to them. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? Wouldn't you just love to hear that? I stand here on the authority of the word. That is nothing compared to the Holy Spirit that can reside in you and can tell you, slow down, hush. Go, come, do this, don't do that. You can just feel it, and you're just flowing with it. And I share this thing. It's not like this, where oh, I'm going to try to stay under the Holy Spirit. It's not like that at all. It's a connection of his love, and you fall in love with his love, and you say, oh, I just got to have this, and you're connected all the time. And pretty soon, you can hardly tell the difference between it. You're just flowing with it, and people are saying, man, you just are. If you only knew how stupid and dumb and rebellious I was, but I'm connected. 
and I'm connected a little bit, but I'm going to be more connected. And I so encourage you in this area of knowledge, get connected. Get online. Sign in. Get the... We went to uh, North Carolina. And I'm not going to mention any names. But someone didn't sign in. They didn't go online and say, Oh, the weather is going to be such and such. Be careful over there. <laughs> Let me tell you, knowledge has the power to spare you. Knowledge can absolutely keep you out of trouble. And ignorance, hard-headedness will get you so much, it will bring you so much trouble. How many, every person out there today that's bound up by some addiction or something, dumb, dumb, dumb. And one of my pastor's friends calls it SOS. You can hardly help them. They are stuck on stupid. I know. I was stuck on stupid. And there's, and, and even right now, I sense in my spirit, you know you got some room to grow. Hallelujah. How many of you know God wants to bring you through? He wants to bring it all the way through. All right, let's see how this works. Verse 3. Hallelujah. I just love it. <laughs> then they came to him bringing a paralyzed person carried by four men. Let, if, I hope you have a four friends that will pick up your little old <laughs> SOS <laughs> and carry you sometimes. Which it, your good friends don't let people drive an ugly truck. What's that all about? But anyway, he had four friends, and when they could not come near the house because of the crowd, they went up on the roof. They had these little patios because it's a very dry and hot area, and they started uncovering the roof. So when they had broken through the roof, now I want to make one stipulation. Please don't do that at Bethlehem. We'll go to two services or whatever it takes, but don't be trying to come through the roof. So when they had broken through, these four guys, I see them hanging on to the ropes. You remember those little uh, flannel board pictures you saw in grades in kindergarten? They let down the bed on which this paralyzed person was laying. They dropped him down in there. And everybody in the house going, and the owner of the house going, hello, what's wrong with this picture? So... I hope you see what's going on there. Verse 5. When Jesus saw, and this is going to be one of the last words for knowledge, it's when you actually physically see it. Because now in the area of knowledge, it is something, as long as we're in this physical body, it's a challenge for us to tap into God's supernatural knowledge. We can, and this is the reason it's so important to have four people to help you because people will tell you, hey, if someone really loves you, sometimes, you know, my wife, you see my tie? They're all stretched a little bit. That's good. My wife grabs my tie and says, all right, listen. Yes, ma'am. That's love. And she has full right. Now, I have full right not to listen, but... <laughs> When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed, the paralytic, Son, I love this, your sins are forgiven. And in one, if you look at this parallel text in Matthew, it says, he said, Son, be of good cheer. I want to let you know, every time God brings knowledge to you, it's always bells and whistles, and it's just, it's an orchestra. It's a harmony. It comes to you, and when you, when you realize that God's speaking to you, and you're ready and willing to listen, it's that, that's a breakthrough that God wants you to have on a regular basis. It's a breakthrough where you're, all of a sudden, one of these young people, I want to be a vet, a veterinarian. I want to be an engineer. And it's, it's like God puts that call on your life, and from that day on, it's just as... It's, it's perfect. It's, it comes all together. And some of the scribes were sitting there. It's interesting, this word scribes. It's where our word grammar. Grammar. How many of you really enjoy that English grammar? And you have someone who's the grammar police scribes. That's what that's all about there were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. And here, let me, let, me, let me let you know, some of you are reasoning in your heart right now. 
And I re- I'm praying, God, don't tell me what they're thinking. It'd be too distracting. But I want to let you know God knows. God knows right where you are mentally. And he not only knows what you're thinking, he understands the underlying reasoning for it. And this is the reason why knowledge will break up some erroneous thoughts. And if you have a wrong train of thoughts, it will drive you straight into the pit. Why does this man, it's arrogant, going in the heart of man with half knowledge. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? It would have been tempting for Jesus to let this ride, but I could never preach this sermon. Verse 8, immediately when Jesus epigonoski, he perceived in his spirit, his spirit, (coughs) information. And along with that information, deal with it. Jesus looks at him. He knew that they reasoned thus within themselves, and he said to them, and over there in Matthew 9, it says, Why do you have evil reasonings in your heart? Now, I want to let you know, sometimes God will reveal to things to you. Be very careful what you do with that. Your knowledge from God is never to tear down. It's always to love and to build up. Jesus' intent was here not to aggravate these people, but to set them free. Why do you reason these things in your heart? And then he asked them a real hard question. Which is easier to say to this paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed, and walk? How many know it's easier to say, I forgive your sins? No demand. Who can check that out? Who can say yeah and nay? But let me tell you, if I say, rise, paralytic, paralyzed, cannot move, Rise and take up your bed and walk. How many know there's, you can prove that? And this is, I believe, the reason Jesus wanted to check their thinking to let them know knowledge has the power to break bad thinking. And this is the reason why if you're not feeding on the Word of God, there's no hope for you to break through into this supernatural knowledge. Verse 10. But that you may know, that's the C one, that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Verse 12, immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. I want to let you encourage you. Jesus is coming and he is going to be the judge. How many know that's true? He is going to judge you and I. And the basis of his judgment, if you look in the Bible, is because he has done and felt and been through any and everything that any of you have been through. And I want to further encourage you that he had this perception, this super knowledge, not based on that he was creator God, which he was, If you look in Philippians 2, he emptied himself of that. Just like you and I are empty. We have no ability. But when the Spirit comes upon us, we can rise up into super knowledge and know things that can spare us major problems. We have knowledge to defeat the enemy. I want to tell you, I don't know what song it was this morning, but I just sensed in my heart, I am hitting this note on the trumpet. Take that devil You and I are meant to be powerful, to bring down darkness. We have this same power to go into super knowledge. If you're here today, I so pray that if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus, as we go into the invitation that you will bow your head and open up your heart and say, I humbly come to you. I need this. I need this experiential relationship where I know and begin to build on a personal experiential knowledge of knowing God as my personal Savior and friend. 
And if you're here today and you know that you are trapped in some sin or weakness that is destroying you or ruining relationships, I plead with you, open up your heart, humble yourself. Our coming into super knowledge is all about trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. If you're here today and you need a healing, come to the Lord and say, God, I've tried everything I can. I've broken your laws. I'm begging you to pour out your spirit upon me. Give me the key that will unlock my prison door. Amen? Come, Donnie and Gene.